I'm Stephen John Drew from the official GunnaGeek.com show, a weekly geek news podcast that is a part of the Gunna Geek Network, just like the show you're checking out now. Shows on the network are individually owned, and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other awesome geeky shows at GunnaGeekNetwork.com. Stand by for a brand new episode of All Things Good and Nerdy. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 349 of the All Things Good and Nerdy podcast. This is recorded live on Sunday, February 24th, 2019. We do have a full crew here today. It's exciting stuff. It's a full house. Yeah, bitches. We've got Willie here, of course, Bob Barker, and his mic like a mofo. You. That was, that was real exciting. We've got it. We've got Bachman on huh? his anthem hangover. Yeah, damn right. Who needs sleep? I have a javelin. And then I'm here just because it's what I do. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is, is Bachman talking about his dick? Is oh, it, no. Are we, is, this, is this his turn to talk about his dick on the show? That's I, awesome. I Colossus. Oh, no. Are, are, is, your, uh, is your javelin <laughs> properly protected? Oh, yes, no. always. Unlike Willie. <laughs> why, why are we doing this? Why? I I was talking about a game. He turned it into dick talk like he always you does. You had to know that Willie was going to do that. <clears throat> so my friends last night, they got me to watch a show that I've I've had some, at least the, the, uh, the couple of episodes I watched, I'm like, okay, this is at least one episode in particular. I was like, I don't know if I should watch this without being put on a list. But um, yeah, uh, <laughs> Big Mouth. No one's gonna and, put you on a list for watching Big Mouth. That show is fucking awesome. And they, we watched the Valentine's Day episode last night. And, no spoilers. And I, I haven't seen it yet. I, well, I do have a new favorite word. This is like they, they just say this word. It's hilarious. It's it's um. Ooh yeah, that bussy. That and it, <laughs> and it has a little ladybug or I forget what it was. Turns to the camera and says, "Yeah, that means butt pussy." <laughs> The that old show. bussy. That show is awesome. Fucking Nick Kroll and the friends yeah. that he put together to do the voices on the show are just so fantastic. And it was it was in reference to whatever Jason Manzukis' character was saying. I didn't even know he had a character in that show. Oh yeah, yeah. Was, uh, he's what Nick. He's the ultimate fuck machine. He, he he's the one that got a pillow pregnant. <laughs> oh, apparently he's uh, double timing now. <laughs> that's, I hope that's not <laughs> spoiling. His character is fucking ridiculous. It's so god. It's so awesome. Well, the whole show is ridiculous. That's part of the yes. fun of it. Yeah, hormone monsters. Like hormone monsters might be the coolest invention ever in kids' cartoons. Because the hormone monstress. Oh, she's she's the best. I mean, I'm gonna get more into it in the what I or I guess I will just get into it now. It's part of what I'm into. We also watched. We watched straight through all the episodes last night of Pin Fifteen. On mm. Hulu, right? Yep. I think it's a yeah, Hulu original. That's and the one where it's the adults playing the younger versions of themselves, right? Yeah, and they they can pass. They they can pass for the being the <laughs> some of them like, ooh, you look like you're just the same age as your parents in some shots. <laughs> it looks like <laughs> Or the people playing uh, your parents. But uh it's fucking awesome seeing Al Borland as being one of the parents too. <laughs> I've seen some clips from it. It does look like a funny show. It, oh, it I, gets oh my god, it gets Oh, it gets deep in some parts. Like, oh shit, it's so cringy. Oh, it's so cringy. If I wa- if I was watching it by myself, I couldn't. I could not watch it straight through. It was like there's too much cringe. <laughs> That's a lot of. cringe. Oh my god, that one kid that wearing the puka shell necklace. So is it worth watching then? Because I've got a bunch of stuff I probably need to still watch, <laughs> but I liked watching it in the company I was with. Uh, and it was okay to stream it straight through, but uh, yeah, uh, watching it by yourself, maybe with your, uh, maybe watching it with your significant other might make it better because it is about you know girls in middle school. That's pretty much the main thing, and they go wow, they go hard and heavy with it. They do not pull punches. One of them finds out about masturbation in one episode. Am I going to go to jail if I watch this? I said the same thing about Big Mouth. Probably not. <laughs> well, I mean, technically, she's playing like a 13-year-old, 14-year-old. Yeah, but player. it's an adult playing that character. So. Yeah. And there's a scene where she 
kind of steals a, a pair of thong, a thongs. It's just one thong, so I don't know if it's to say thongs. Yeah, yeah. she's like literally just looking at her ass in the mirror, shaking it like, okay. <laughs> But yeah, uh, but it was but it's hilarious because every other uh, person in the school is like of the correct age. Well, at least they look of the correct age. And so that makes it even weirder when they're like, when they're like, oh, let's go make out with them or something like that. Like, okay, this is, I think they should be put on a list. So, Willie, you've done a great job advocating for this show. I'm most certainly not going to watch it now because I don't want to go. No, go ahead and watch it. It's whatever. <laughs> Awkward moments are abound, and it will make you. And it is of the same time. It takes place in the year two thousand. Of you know, so when we were in middle school, oh, Jesus, God. Or, well, I think I was in high school. I think you were too. Then yeah, I think I was, I was in. Yeah, Navy. I was in high school. I'd have been a sophomore, I think, in two thousand. Oh, I was a freshman in the year two thousand. It, it depends I was on when. Four in years because... into the Navy. <laughs> well, I was talking to Chris in particular. Yeah, not it you, depends but. on when in two thousand because I you was children. freshman sophomore year somewhere there because i graduated in 03 i think 04 i should have went to 03 but i was like born i think they said like four days after the uh, cutoff date jesus so i got out of the navy before you fuckers left high school <laughs> yeah how's that yeah. make you feel old there you go. <laughs> the, fact that, the fact that now a show set in the 2000 in 2000 is now 20 years in the past like that's fucking terrifying it's only 19 it's only 19 <laughs> yeah i'm rounding up a whole part of a year. Jesus Christ, I feel old. Well, you rounded up like 10 months. Motherfucker, I was born in the 70s. I am ancient. <laughs> I mean, I was born in 85. 84. <laughs> yeah, when you were born, I was watching Night A Nightmare on Elm Street on VHS rental at home. What's Willie. a VHS? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have some VHSs right now. Uh, some of these, I don't even know how I own. I didn't buy them. I don't even know how they got in my collection. There's Sleepy Hollow, Ace Ventura, When Nature Calls, Chicago. Do you even have Austin. anything to play VHSs on? Uh, no. Uh, Austin Powers and Goldmember. I own three ooh, DVD ooh. VCR combos because it's the only way you can buy a VCR these days. Apparently, I got the craft over there on VHS. So ooh, nice. That's a good one. So but really my best one. Oh, hold on once. I got one more. And then my favorite one over there is Con Air. Either I think we bought it from uh, 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 Blockbuster because it still has a Blockbuster sticker on it. I think I have that on VHS. I also have the twenty fifth. I have the twenty fifth anniversary edition of Enter the Dragon that comes with lobby cards inside the VHS clamshell. <laughs> oh yeah, but it's officially bought from Blockbuster because it is in the the little sleeve. You know, like nice the- double collector's edition. <laughs> For those of you that uh, are too young to know, Beth, uh, no, I keep wanting to say Best Buy, Blockbuster is a, uh, a video rental service that was only in brick and mortar stores that you had to go to and have a membership card that was laminated okay. to rent movies. Before Netflix was a thing. Before the killer of it. It was the... it was. Netflix killed Blockbuster the way Blockbuster killed mom and pop video stores, which is why I never felt bad for Blockbuster, because fuck them. Well, I mean, they're still going <laughs> strong. I guess, what, two locations in Alaska, right? Down to one now. One? Yeah, I think there's just one left. Still going strong. The one that uh, John <laughs> Oliver sent uh, the jockstrap from Cinderella Man to got closed down, I believe. What do they do? Put that up on their wall? Yeah, they or- actually. John Oliver bought a bunch of Russell Crowe's prop memorabilia from his divorce when he was trying to raise money and then gave a bunch of stuff, including Russell Crowe's jockstrap from Cinderella Man to the Blockbuster in Alaska. I would just closed. I would just love it if that one Blockbuster turns into like a shenanigans and have a bunch of movie props up on their walls. That would be hilarious. But it's closed now. It, it didn't make it. And I, I mean, think the, the jockstrap one, got lost. I mean, I hope they sent it to the <laughs> other one that's still going. I, mean, I think they sent it back to John Oliver, if I remember correctly. I mean, that would be the correct thing to do. But I mean, I would at least ask John Oliver first before saying to like, uh, well, we're closing down. Sorry about that. Uh, can we just send this to the other Blockbuster? I mean, that would be awesome. Come to Blockbuster and see all our shit on the walls. It's the flare on the walls. Thank you. They did definitely have some flare. That's flare. what I said. All the shit I, had, on the walls. I had to look because SP was talking about being more ancient than me because he was born the month that the number one song was a Shaft, which is pretty cool. So I had to look it up and see January 1978. 
two days after I was born, the number one song was How Deep Is Your Love by the Bee Gees. Because I'm that fucking old. Four inches deep. <laughs> and the next number one song was Baby Come Back by Playa, which that's a fucking good one. That was a good song that month. Oh, yeah. Uh, you, I like to sing that during uh, Overwatch when people are just rushing to the point without grouping up first. <laughs> Baby, come back. You can blame it all on me. Well, and then the next number one song in February was Staying Alive. Once again, the Bee Gees. I ah, was born I was ah, born at the rise ah. of power of the Bee Gees. <laughs> I, I hope you got the joke I was going for. Oh, Jesus. Said a ha, ha, ha. Uh-huh. Ah, ah, ah. I'm explaining the joke. Willie, you and I are screwed because we're November, uh, we're 84 people or 84, 85. 85, which means there's no good music. Uh, 80s man. The yeah, there's movie movies. Sense, mother- oh, movies wise. Oh, yeah. Or, Howard the you, Duck. Why did I say movie? Uh, yeah, I meant music. Me, it was Wake Me Up Before You Go Go. Oh hell yeah! Song. Are we going? Are Wham, we going like bitch. a week we were born? Wham! Yep. <laughs> well, hold on a second. Uh, let me see. Come on, that that song made it all the way to Deadpool number one, man. <laughs> yeah, so November seventeenth, the number one song in America, which is the closest to. My birth date during that week was Wake Me Up Before You Go Go. And previous to that was Caribbean wow. Queen, No More Love on the Run by Billy Ocean. Oh, <laughs> hell yes. That's some good fucking music. Uh, so mine was. Oh, mine uh, was Wham to. Wait, no, wait. This is not. This is not showing my, my birth month. What's your birth month, Willie? October. Because I get Wham, everything she wants. Simple Minds, Don't You Forget About Me. Let's see, and, 85 started out with Like a Virgin Madonna in the number one spot. Like, and the number one is Crazy for You, Madonna, May 11th. But it's not showing there you October. Go. Uh, October. I'm, I'm looking at the whole list. What October was the day in October? With, I've got it October ready. 21st yeah. is my So the closest date. to you is Take On Me by AHA. Hell yes. And then the next week is Saving All My Love For You by Whitney Houston. Hell yeah, I don't dude! Know that one at all. And that month started. That month started with "Money for Nothing" by Dire Straits. Yep. Ooh, there we go. But yeah, Aha, the fucking animated cartoon music oh, video. No. I fucking love that song. And that was definitely what a French artist too that did it. I believe so. Yeah, it was because that was uh, definitely in uh, the style like the French like uh like comic drawing because they have yeah. a certain style to them. Like you can usually tell. Yeah, their illustration was fantastic. Yes, so that is all courtesy of Wikipedia is where I'm pulling that stuff from. All I did was number one song to October 1985 to find it for cool. Willie, and it took me to the number one songs of 1985. <laughs> Good old just, Wikipedia. Yeah. If you just do number one and then the year, you can go to the Wikipedia and it lists the entire year, which is awesome. <laughs> and uh, 85 was a good year. 85 was a damn good year. Well, Lionel Richie, feel old, Starship, and... Stevie Wonder. Uh, I don't feel old. I feel like me. So old. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, I'm not going to deny that. I mean, you are the baby of the show, though. So, and the best looking one. The bar is not very high for that, Willie. Uh trust <laughs> me. I know I'm barely on that one. <laughs> well, now that we've also depressed ourselves, this is this is a good start to the show. Hell yes. Or at least I might not be the better looking one, but I'm the more charismatic of all you all guys. Eh, I don't care. We'll, we'll let him I'm gonna wrap his... this shit up because I'm gonna go listen to a 1985 Spotify list. We're gonna let him have his dream, <laughs> and we're just gonna roll on in. What the movie 1985? Live from the ATG and Studios on uh, the internet. It's the news of the week. We preempt all this 1980s music talk to bring you to some 2019. Geek talk. Yes, it's the news of the week. It's that part of the show where we run down what's in our minds. Some of the most interesting geeky and or nerdy news to have cropped up in the last week. And Willie, why don't you start us off? Because we were talking the 80s. Let's go back to the 80s. All right there, brother. I didn't read much of this article. But I just know I just know the headline, and that's just as weird as all I need to get. Because the headline I saw was that. There's going to be a Hulk Hogan biopic. Oh, there's a perfect line for this, and I don't think Willie's going to know it. Oh, if I don't stop dying first. Oh, that call. <laughs> that voice makes it happen. It tickles my throat in a bad way. Just like Dick. <laughs> I knew it was coming. I knew it was but coming. um, 
Well, uh, what is that line you were talking about? Well, you're going to tell us about an actor, and I would say okay, that okay, the okay, actor okay. has been training, taking his vitamins, and saying his prayers. Oh, yeah, because this character is Chris <laughs> Hemsworth. Thor himself will be Hulk Hogan. And, oh, my God. What, what I did read a little bit into the article, I'm not going to lie. And from what I see, they're not going to touch into the really good stuff, as in the, the racism or the sex tape stuff. Well, in so, all fairness, like none of that came out until the 2000s anyways. If you're telling the origin story of the guy who basically created self-promotion in wrestling, that's not where you start. The number one <laughs> most selfish asshole in wrestling? And well, that was kind of a toss of between him and uh, yeah. the rest of the clique, as it was called. Yeah. You, know what, that's, you know what? That's fair, but I mean, he also had over on the click, too. He could overwrite the club. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I know we're in the middle of this match, but uh, I think it's better if I win. So just lay down for me. Well, in all fairness, he was Hulk Hogan. So that's also true. And the finger <laughs> poke of doom, let's not forget about that. So Sailor <laughs> Poland is asking in the chat room, are they going to mention Hogan's weird fascination with his daughter? Well, it doesn't sound like it because from what yeah. I can tell is this movie is going to be more about the focusing on the creation of the Hulk Hogan persona and the height of his popularity during the Hulkamania, Hulkamania. era, brother. Yeah, so, you're uh, going to see the, the rise of Hulkamania. Yeah, this is eight, this is 70s, 80s, 90s kind of thing with Hulk Hogan, it sounds like. So we will not get to the creepy fixation on his daughter and then marrying a woman who looks a lot like his daughter. Yeah, my I question really, is, oh. if they get to WrestleMania 3 and the slam heard around the world, who plays Andre? CGI. I'm okay with that. I think it would uh, have to be because, like, don't like Big Show is like height wise there, but nobody's the mass of Andre the Giant. Like, there's no other human that takes up that much space. I know he was <laughs> built as 700 pounds. <laughs> Notice how I said built as because yeah, well. he was not. <laughs> Lots of those really big guys are slightly built a little. And they also than added they inches to them too. <laughs> They like to embellish, let's just say. Well, it is sports entertainment. I mean, I hope we get some behind the scenes of some of the movies when he went Hollywood, like uh, Mr. Nanny or oh, one of my God. favorite ones. I have the DVD on my shelf over there, Suburban Commando. Well, so I think gets... I saw that once when it came out. I've never seen it again. <laughs> it gets interesting because evidently Todd Phillips, who did The Hangover and things like that, will be directing it. And unless I'm misreading this, it sounds like it's going to be a Netflix thing that will come to the big screen, but it's predominantly a Netflix biopic. Maybe I'm reading this incorrectly. I mean, hmm. it's, it's like so Netflix weird. is doing the movie, but then it's going to get a theatrical run probably so they can go up for possible awards. Yeah, there's not going to be any awards for a Hulk Hogan <laughs> biopic. You never know. Uh -huh. Chris Hemsworth is motherfucking talented. Come on, y'all. Yeah, he was funny as shit in Ghostbusters the I, reboot. I don't dispute uh, that Chris was, Hemsworth is talented. I dispute that there's a wide draw of people wanting to see a Hulk Hogan biopic, especially after recent things that have come out about Hogan. It's kind of cool no, the mania some. That's well, since, why people will want to see it because this will only be about the positive, and so the people that remember loving Hulkamania and don't want to think about things like a sex tape or the other racist shit will want to see this movie. I mean, it's going to be like watching The Wrestler just sadder because it's real life. <laughs> <laughs> Although The Wrestler was so good. God, dude, I, I'm not afraid to admit I cried during that movie, especially it's in the trailer, too, when he goes, I'm just a I'm just a beaten down piece of meat. And I just don't want you to hate me anymore. Oh, my God. That got me. That he was tears. really fucking good in that movie. Uh, that was anime. Didn't that, didn't that win, too? <laughs> Yeah, it won some, some stuff. I, yeah, it won Best awards. Picture? I don't think it won Best Picture. I don't think it oh, did. Okay. I'm it just served it. And I'm sure it doesn't hurt that uh, The Rock's movie, uh, Fighting With My Family, that he did, that's all about the wrestler uh, brain fart. I, His father? Paige. No, all about the wrestler oh. Paige currently and her family growing up and stuff has kind of done really well review-wise. It was like a 94% Rotten Tomatoes last I looked and stuff like that. I kind of want to see that flick are we only talking yeah. about wrestlers it, that have sex tapes now it does look it funny sounds like it doesn't it uh wow yeah mainly the wrestler won uh, like critics awards for different film associations independent Stared award london's film critics award uh but it was golden globe award for best actor motion picture mickey rourke oh that's, that's yep that's the big one so he won it for best actor 
Like it has a it has a list of like thirty awards that it won, but most of them they're like San Diego Film Critics Associate Society Award, Online Film Critics Society Award, Kansas City Film Critics. So basically, like it won the Critics Award at every theater that or every festival that it played at. So yeah, it I mean, won a ton of awards, but the big one was Best Actor. I mean, it deserved it too because if it made me cry and feel all those emotions, it deserved something. Well, yeah, and it was weird ass Mickey Rourke making you cry, which like that's even more impressive. <laughs> oh, it's just oh, it's so like ah, uh, uh, that movie. Well, this is interesting. The names I see involved in it is it's a Netflix production. It's done by uh, Todd Phillips and Bradley Cooper's production house, also producing Chris Hemsworth and Eric Bischoff. Oh yeah, I saw Eric Bischoff. Don't forget well, Hogan's in there too. It makes sense. Bischoff wrote half of wrestling in the eighties and nineties. Like that guy was in charge of a yeah, lot of careers. Well, was in the 80s when he started as a writer, though? Yeah, but 90s is really... 90s is his time, though, when he was running WCW. Yeah, 90s when he was running shit, but like 80s he was already writing. Like, he's been in that shit for a long time. And let's not forget about Hulk Hogan's, like, first, like, starring role in a motion picture, and there was No Holds Barred. Oh. I'm pretty sure him and Vince McMahon locked themselves in, like like, a hotel room over the weekend with a pound of, like, Coke just writing out this script. One pound, boy, you better up that. This is a pro wrestler and a very large CEO you're talking about. Per each? Per <laughs> night? I'd say per each, per night. Per diem. Per diem, there you go. <laughs> per meal. They probably had a pound of Coke per meal. Vince, where's my per diem? <laughs> Brother. Well, those, it's coming to Netflix, not... so I'll probably watch it at some point in time. I don't think this is something I would go to the theaters to see, though. Oh, I shouldn't have had that sushi. <laughs> brother you forgot to say brother at the end of it yeah i mean do you think he calls the girl brother during sex uh, he does possible. live his gimmick so it's possible <laughs> yeah terry bully has been hulk hogan for quite some time is terry bully even his actual real name terry yes. gene bolea i believe is okay. his real name. all right just want to make sure i remember i think the only other like wrestler who like stays in character and never really breaks is uh i don't even i can't remember his real name but the the undertaker oh mark i've always yeah i've always heard stories about how he stays in fucking character yeah i saw or is it mark calloway i remember one of them was the fake name and one of them was the real name i can remember which one was which i remember he was also mark is his real name (laughs) it was macho man didn't really break character very much though let's be honest who Ultimate Warrior didn't because I think he legitimately thought he was the Ultimate Warrior. The dude He did, is the Ultimate Warrior. The dude cha- <laughs> did change his name to Warrior Warrior. Remember. <laughs> yeah, he, he was all Warrior all the time. <laughs> so he's Warrior Squared? His his first name was Warrior and his last name was Warrior when he got his name changed on. <laughs> that dude was awesome. You can talk about cocaine use. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I want to uh, officially apologize for our neighbors around us and also anyone else who got uh you know thrown at him especially to uh, uh mr president here that he had to watch hogan knows best i apologize for america tainting your screens <laughs> I, I really i'm sorry about that it's okay willie y- your apology is accepted oh my god thunder in paradise thank you sailor poland i, re- I watched the <laughs> shit out of that Oh, watch the shit out of Thunder Paradise. Thunder in Paradise. <laughs> That's all I remember of the theme song. It's probably just as well. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Don't stick meth up your butt. We'll tell it to Stevie Nicks. <laughs> what the fuck? You never heard that story? No. no. She apparently blew out her nose. She like ruined her nose cavity. And so I don't to start- want to. So she had you to start boofing it. Let me finish it. the sentence. I don't want to hear the it's, story. It's too late. So she had to start boofing it. And uh, she probably had to get like uh, roadies or uh, groupies to just start blowing it right up her asshole. Jesus. I, be- I believe that. I believe that's true. Next thing you know, he'll um, start telling us about Richard Gere and a gerbil. If we're going to go. Like I'm, I'm not sure I believe that because you've seen the size of a gerbil. I An asshole so... can stretch, but I don't know about that much. God damn it. I was really hoping he wouldn't go down that path. No. Of course he did. Of course he did. I mean, shoving things up your bussy is always a fun thing, but a gerbil might be too much for anybody. Oh. When I heard that term, 
You know what I instantly thought of? Do you remember uh, uh, um, um, uh, from Dust Till Dawn? Mm-hmm. If you haven't seen, I'm not going to ruin what happens like in the halfway point because I love everyone to watch that and just get so surprised at the halfway point. But there's a uh, Cheech Marin has like three roles in the movie. One of them, he's standing out front of the uh, the titty twister, the the strip, the club, and he's just saying like, "Pussy, pussy, pussy, come get your pussy." Like, he's the pussy barker. Off. Yeah, pretty much. I, I just want him to reply. I just want to see someone replace it with "bussy, bussy, bussy." He did that on Douglas' movies. Doug asked him if he remembered that speech, and he did the whole thing again. Cheech uh, has that speech still memorized. It's fucking hilarious. Uh, can we just talk about stories about Cheech? Because I also heard of another one. So, do we have time? Do we have time for another? Before one? we transition, though, Suncast wants to know: Have you heard that story about the KTLA anchor that died after being in a hotel room with a dude from Grinder and sticking meth up his butt? Yikes. I don't know nope. what KTLA is. It's a um, channel, a news, news channel, station, news station kind of thing. I'm just against people doing meth in general. Well, me too. But I did actually see something about that on Reddit and went, "Oh Jesus Christ!" I think that was. My I reaction. mean, if you want to experiment with that stuff, I mean, hell, everyone has their own way of doing life. But stay away from those things: heroin, meth, crack. Just don't do those, please. If you're going to do anything. Do the safer ones. I've seen what meth does to people. I live yeah, in one of the places out. that's in deep with meth and the opioid crisis and things like that. It's not stuff to play around with, kids. I had a friend, and she uh, I haven't seen – I had uh, there was like a couple of years I didn't really like talk to her or anything, and she like messaged me and wanted to hang out. I was like, cool, so I want to go see her, hang out with her and her boyfriend. And like, like I said, it's been a couple of years, and all of a sudden, uh, as soon as I met her, I was like, oh, you have meth mouth. I said this in my head. Mm. I was like, oh, okay. Because uh, if you see Meth Mouth, you know exactly what yeah, I'm talking you about. you do. It's, yep. it's sad. <laughs> like, the, just the darkness. She wasn't, like, missing teeth. It was just, like, that darkness around, like, you know, it was like, oh, okay. Well, now that we've talked sad and depressing things like drug addiction, let's talk about something that's interesting. Does that sound better? I mean, yes. it better be. All right. So... There is a new rumor that Microsoft and Nintendo are planning on teaming up in a big way in 2019. The question is, what does that mean? In the past week or so, there's been some rumblings that Nintendo and Microsoft had big plans to work together. However, specifics haven't really surfaced. There is a report coming directly from a site called Direct Feed Games, which then cites multiple inside sources, saying that Microsoft is about to release an Xbox app on Nintendo Switch. This will bring Microsoft's Xbox Game Pass to the system via its new streaming technology called Project X Cloud. Furthermore, Nintendo will also start publishing some of its first-party titles. Excuse me, Microsoft will apparently start publishing some of its first-party first-party titles directly onto the Switch. And the first two have come out, mm-hmm. and that is supposedly going to be, and I lost my link where I had it. Oh, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, and there was another game that I cannot find. So it's twofold news. First, that Microsoft is going to start bringing some of their first party games. Cuphead, I think it was. Microsoft. Uh, don't they already have like a first party game on the Switch? Well, technically, it's a first party now of Minecraft. They do, and that's on multiple things. But this is more of pushing more of the Microsoft games out there for yeah, folks to play. The, the bigger move to me, and this is the bigger rumor, so I'm not sure if it would be true, is if they brought an app to the Switch that basically lets you play Game Pass games on the Switch so long as you had network connectivity. That would be really cool. It's all based off of their cloud architecture to do everything, similar to what we had with multiple other cloud streaming services in the past, the difference being that Microsoft owns a crap load of servers. So they can probably pull it off. So the thought here would be is if you're a Game Pass subscriber, so on Microsoft, it's 10 bucks a month, you get access to just a back catalog of a boatload of games from the Xbox One, 360, and the original. If you could play all of those on the Switch, then you kind of have Xbox as a service. You make 10 bucks a month off people playing those on the Switch. It's kind of a win. And it would be kind of cool just to be sitting there be like, oh, I want to play Halo. Let me fire up the Xbox app on my uh, Switch because I don't have the I don't have an Xbox this time around or something like that and play it. It's a pretty cool move. I'm intrigued. If it actually happens, we probably have to wait until E3 to see it. Well, that would be interesting. I mean, it would give the Switch more games is what it actually needs. It gives Microsoft more games than they actually need, though, to be honest, too. Oh, I mean, that's, oh yeah. Th- th- there's such a large back catalog here on Game Pass. 
it's interesting. I like Sailor Poland's take on it in the chat room saying you're missing the most obvious thing Microsoft is most obvious reason why they're doing this <laughs> branding because it does shit in Japan. What better yes. way to spread to spread awareness than yeah. partnering with Japan's biggest game company? And remember, th- oh, this it's not unheard of in Japan. There were like on the Vita, people playing Assassin's Creed or something like <clears> that. <throat> it was rendered in the cloud and pushed to the Vita and stuff like that. So it's not unheard of. Yeah, as that would give Microsoft a better way to push into Japan if they were coming across on a Nintendo system, because I mean that's 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 the 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 home the hometown love for Nintendo is all right there in Japan. I think it's a really interesting move. Do I think it's going to happen? Boy, I think it would be a super ballsy move to do it. But I think the concern that would be is that you're cutting into your hardware. Now, the real trade-off is how much money do they make off of hardware right now? I don't know. If they're not making a ton of money off of hardware... Well, Microsoft doesn't have a portable gaming system, do they? Well, no. But this would... Well... Neither does Sony anymore, really, because the Vita has been discontinued in North America, if I recall yeah. correctly. Okay, uh, I hope I, I know I went out a little bit. I messed up the cord, and I have to reopen the whole application. But the Vita, I got one. Nice. Does it have a steering wheel attached to it? What was that? It has, it like, a, weird. It has like a grip thing. My buddy gave it to me because mine was stolen, so he wasn't using his, so he gave it to me. But he also had like a little grip thing to it. That just kind of attaches to it, and hmm. I mean, yeah, I mean the Vita was fun as hell. I'm not gonna lie, I had a bunch of good games with it. Freedom Wars was the best. So <laughs> I went and pulled because I was curious what the current crop of games is on Xbox Game Pass, and according to Eurogamer, in a list that was updated three days ago, there's over 250 games from the Xbox One, Xbox 360, and the Xbox Live arcade games they've done before. And it's not necessarily just like little indie things in a lot of cases. You've got Batman Return to Arkham, which is Arkham Asylum and uh, Arkham City combined into one game, things like that. The Bioshock series is on there. That's just getting in through the bees. Uh, I mean, there's a crap load of stuff on there. All of the Fable games that Microsoft did, which I thought were pretty good. Gears uh. of War, all of Halo. Let's see, a bunch of the so different I- Lego games. So you like all the lies that Peter Molyneux likes to tell people? Is well, that what yes. you're telling They me? were super overhyped, let's be honest, but they were pretty fun games. Ninja Straight Gaiden Black. Bold faced lies. Perfect Dark, Resident Evils, Saints Row games are all on there too. So if I had if I had my Switch and was a subscriber to Game Pass or was interested in some of these games and didn't have an Xbox, this would be really intriguing if they pushed this out to the Switch and the gameplay experience from something rendered in the cloud and push to your switch was still good for 10 bucks a month i think it'd be a solid addition to the switch's lineup i this is i don't know how i feel about this because this is like this goes against just like the basic like whole idea of console wars from back in like when we were kids sega nintendo sega you know like this i don't know how i feel about this let's just intermingle all this stuff i mean i'm not saying it's a bad thing I just don't know how to feel about it. It's just weird, you know? No, that's you, fair. you see what I'm saying? I, I just feel weird. Yeah, All this co- uh, just like com- competitiveness, just being like, no, we're being cooperativeness is like, I don't know. What is this? This is like the Wild West. Should I feel good about this <laughs> or bad about this? So I think it's an interesting play by Microsoft to basically <clears throat> say, hey, with Xbox... We don't care about the hardware. We just want to be the service here where you can get the games. And it kind of ties into some of the rumors we've heard about what one of the versions of the next Xbox would be, which was light hardware but relies on your broadband internet connection to basically do all of the rendering in the Azure cloud and push it back to your console. So if they're already planning on doing that for next-gen Xbox, why don't you just apply that same thing to Game Pass, make it playable on the Switch, which... Yes, the Switch does not have great hardware and probably couldn't play a bunch of these games, but by using their cloud servers, makes them playable. For 10 bucks a month, I think you could get a lot of subscribers on board. I don't mean to bring this back to Sony, but that was one of the great features of the Vita. You could play any PS4 game through like through the internet. Like you just streams it to the Vita and you could play it. So Sailor so. Paul in the chat room says if it gets more genuine games 
uh, instead of online economies that only exist to siphon money from players, so I'm all for it. Remember, people are speculating that the console game ecosystem will be dead because of cloud gaming. I, I think we've already started to see some of this migration away from having to be console specific for things. Let's talk about Fortnite. Let's talk about Apex Legends. You're mm -hmm. seeing a lot of these things that come out on multiple consoles, and then you start to see them once you bash down Sony's doors, allow for crossplay and stuff like that. I won't be shocked if later down the line we see crossplay on Apex Legends as well. Uh, but I'm kind of curious when they're going to start doing that. I mean, they, they're probably going to at some point in time. They said it was on their roadmap. They weren't ready for it yet. And at first they kind of poo-pooed going to the Switch, and then there was rumor they were exploring to see whether they could go to the Switch. So it'll be interesting. This if whole... they... Go ahead, sorry. Uh, if they do go to the Switch, I hope they go the route of Warframe and not Ark Survival. Yeah. Just, I mean, who? Jesus. Well, and give credit where credit's due. If you've uh, played, uh, my, not Minecraft, Fortnite. Crap, Fortnite, they actually did a really good modification of it for the Switch. The graphics aren't as good, but it's still quick. It's still like, it's still easy to play. You don't have issues there where it bogs down and doesn't run. They cut down the draw distance and things like that to make that happen. Well, I but mean, it's they still have it on the phone. Playable. Sorry, go ahead. I mean, you, you play people against people on the phone. Yeah. Which I'm sure the Switch probably isn't much more better. I mean, it's an Android tablet, basically. That That's what the Switch yeah. is with an NVIDIA processor in it. It's not a bad one, but that's exactly what it is. So the, the precedent is there. We're starting to see a shift towards people saying hey you don't necessarily have to commit to playing just this one game on one system games like spider-man that were playstation exclusives are starting to become less of the norm and more of the exception of the rule i just hope that doesn't go away that's the only thing i'm hoping for i mean like uh, like you know i'm not talking about exclusivity i'm talking about you know just single player just you know main features of games well that, that's my biggest concern is we've seen a big shift Fucking especially in recent years away from <laughs> the in-depth engrossing single player campaign because they can't monetize that they can tack a multiplayer onto it but people aren't necessarily going to play it i mean remember when mass effect 3 came out i was one of the ones going how the hell are they put multiplayer on here the multiplayer was actually good but it was the beginning of the shift that you saw when ea acquired bioware it was we need to find some way to monetize this after people plunk down their 60 bucks and then buy all their DLC. And it was little loot boxes and stuff like that. So it's the trend of what we're seeing. And much like Sailor Poland said, if that's not your jam, Game Pass coming to Switch or just being a Game Pass subscriber on the Xbox opens up a whole bunch of games to you that have really good single player stories. And Spider-Man did do well because it showed that a lot of people are still wanting that single-player experience and don't want to be stuck in another multiplayer game. Right, and, and I think that's the exception of the norm because the, the simple fact of the matter is is once the DLC is done for that, the ecosystem for that game stops. People aren't going to keep buying the game over and over again. They're not going to be buying loot boxes or anything like that. Yeah. So eventually the money tapers off. True. But it did sell like hotcakes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a really good game. I mean, I will attest to that. It's part of what made me get there. So it's interesting that we got to that idea of games as a service because it kind of ties in nicely to what Anthony had for us in his news. Yes, I does. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, I'm tired. So allegedly, the way things were going, the pre-order people for Anthem with the EA origin bullshit, blah, blah, blah. They all started on the 15th. So um, the most important thing about it is that the demo was not like the beta of the game. The demo was a locked demo that they, you know, it's completely different from the launch. So on launch day on the 15th, they had a patch for a whole bunch of the stuff, problems that they found during the demo that they didn't know about because millions of people played VIP and millions more played during the free weekend of Anthem. So they had a ton of data to go through. They did a huge patch for the 15th and then another patch for the 22nd for it to go live for everybody because those of us with the, our Sony PS4s had to wait until the 22nd to play. So there was a giant patch, but I had been waiting for day one Anthem. I was actually taking half a Friday off because it was supposed to go live at like like 9 a.m. UK time or something. So I can't remember what time it was supposed to be here, but it was like because I'm like seven hours ahead of Greenwich Mean Time. So I was expecting, you know to go check the clock and see where the clock was at on Thursday night just to see how many hours because I think it was supposed to start at like 2 a.m. But when I looked at 11 p.m. on Thursday night, I had the ready button to start playing. So I just fucking logged in the game. 
And about four hours later, I went to bed so I could go to work because I played for four hours until about 3 a.m. <clears throat> Excuse me, going through the tutorial, running into stuff. And honestly, I had none of the bugs that a whole lot of people experience because it's day one launch of a massive game. So there's always bugs. People were having, you know, still login issues, some load screen issues. It ended up being that most of that, from what I saw, was PCs with older modems or older video cards, older hard drives. Like, they found just a bunch of PC issues, which, you know, you can't build a game to handle every single person's specs when it comes to PC builds because, well, there's a billion variables. So a lot of that stuff got fixed. And then they did another patch yesterday. So they've already put three patches on the day one game and fixed a ton of issues. I have yet to have a single load screen lockup. I have yet to be kicked out of a mission. None of the things that most people are complaining about have happened to me, so I felt really lucky. And then yesterday, after the patch, I did finally get a bug. So the pre-order, when you did the $80 Legion of Dawn edition, you got a an attachment to your ranger suit that was power level 18 that you could use right from the beginning of the game and a power level 18 legendary rifle. So the rifle is fantastic. It's got, you know, it's legendary stats, massive damage four um, what do they call them? Artifacts on it to where it's the, the additions to your powers. It makes everything else better. So basically carrying this gun around just makes you badass Cause also if you deplete it, it's supposed to recharge your shields. So it worked awesome Thursday. It worked great Friday. And then after Saturday's patch, I got my first bug. And it's funny because I was my nephew was watching me play it. And, you know, you fire rounds on a gun and it's a single fire gun. So you're sitting there actually you know, clicking the trigger for each shot on the gun. And so the algorithm and the math thing is just counter negative one, counter negative one. And so it just takes however many rounds you have, lowers the number by one. You can see it on your screen, right? Like any FPS. Well, the glitch that's on the new legendary weapon now lets the counter keep going below zero. And so the gun won't reload, but it also won't fire. So if you hit the trigger, the round number goes to negative one or negative two or negative three, I even saw. And the gun doesn't reload. When you hit reload, your character puts in one round and then it stops like you're reloading a sniper rifle. It's the weirdest fucking thing ever. And it's not recharging my shields because apparently it doesn't realize that it's reloading because it doesn't realize that it spent the whole magazine. So yeah, it's, it's, the very, it's the strangest bug I've ever seen. But honestly, other than that, that's the only problem I've had in the game so far. It is a super smooth. It's way better than it was during uh, you know the demo. The flying smoother, the swimming smoother. The entire world has had a visual update. Uh, lots of the stuff where it's just like crash pieces of relics and you know equipment and stuff laying on the side has more like plant growth over it and more. Um, I guess colorized would be the word. Like they've taken plant growth and done color passes on it and highlights on it and neon coloring of different plant life. So like the entire planet has looks more lived in, I guess would be the way to put it, than it did during the demo. Um, yeah, the whole open world thing is fantastic. Moving from mission to mission was awesome. I did the first stronghold again for the first time fighting the giant spider. Um, that whole mission was actually a little harder than it was in the demo. We actually, I think I went down four times and I was playing on normal because I, definitely not ready to play on hard because i'm not great at the game yet but and also i'm just i'm not great at first person shooters but yeah i freaking love it like i have been playing the hell out of it since it came out i've gotten up to almost level 10 so i'm almost to where we were when you start the demo the fact that like they give you a rec suit to start the tutorial and they changed it to where it, the original concept was going to be that everybody had to start with the ranger and then you would eventually unlock other mechs after looking at the data that they got from the demo, they saw how popular some of the other suits were. And so now when you finish the tutorial at level two, it unlocks a pilot slot for your first javelin. And you can pick any javelin in the game. So if you want, you can start the game as a Colossus or as an Interceptor or as a Storm. You don't have to start with the Ranger, but you don't get your second suit until level eight. So it's... They made it more of a decision, but they actually give you the option now that basically you can start with whatever suit you really enjoyed during the demo. But yeah, I mean, there's still, you know, there, there's bugs. There's people reporting lots of problems. I'm going to do a, a report today to report the problem with my gun because I'm seeing a couple of people are having it. And also, yeah, after the patch, there was one where I finished the mission and my legendary weapon disappeared from my inventory, which was weird because it also takes 18 points away from your overall suit score, which is how you tell like how powerful your suit is. 
and I realized that my ranger was missing 18 points and I went and looked and my gun was gone. It wasn't on my character and it wasn't in my inventory. So it looked like I had salvaged it, though I know for a fact I hadn't. And I had to restart the game and then it came back. So it's it's got some weird weird glitches, some a couple of weird bugs. But I mean, honestly, I'm not seeing most of the big ones people are seeing. And it's just fun as hell. The flying around, the shooting, all the special effects, the the marketplace that's nowhere near as bad as people thought with the that one video that everybody showed with uh, the store being just some outrageous prices. Like, they're still pricey. The items are real pricey. But also, um, the the coin that you get in-game, they give you 40000 to start with. I spent like 12000 of it on a skin or 1200 of it on a skin. And then I've already made more than that back, and I'm back above where I started with. And when the week ends, uh, the way they do the alliance thing is fantastic. I had, up until yesterday, I hadn't played with anybody on my friends list. I literally played only solo. And the alliance counter starts going in, and every time you finish a mission, finish free play, finish a stronghold, any anything that's you know an exploration or an expedition, when you get done... You get experience points for your leveling, experience points to everything you do, and you add on to the alliance system experience points. So your alliance level goes up for the week. So like right now, mine's at level five, and I guess it, I think it caps out at ten each week. But as you raise that meter, every person on your friends list that is playing the game Anthem will get coin at the end of the week for how much time you've put into the game. So like White Dingo out, uh, Willie has been playing a ton of this. He's already like level twenty. His Colossus is freaking fantastic. I ran through the stronghold with him. But without having seen him online, without playing with him up until yesterday afternoon, he had already done enough to be Lions level 7. So on my friends list, there was a his name, the Alliance level, and how much coin I'm going to get at the end of the week because he's been playing. So every person that's on your friends list, whether you squad up or group up with them or not, whether or not you play with them, whether you even talk to them in-game, Every person on your friends list on the PS4 network, and I'm assuming the same on Xbox and PC, if they're on your list and they're playing Anthem, you get money for that, which I think is probably the coolest, like uh, you know, like guild type system I've ever seen. Because yeah, you don't even have to play together. It's just the fact that you are friends and you both own the same game. I freaking love it. I'm excited to see where they go with it. And they've added on to um, they had the 90 day checklist was coming out for what they were going forward with. And I'm not going to go over all of it, but like literally, they have like the cataclysms ranked out. They got different uh, stuff that's coming for the suits, different um, you know skins and things. It's probably going to be a game, not quite like Overwatch, but to where they'll have holiday events with the cataclysms. Like basically, they can change the weather patterns in the world, which they showed us a little bit at the end of the demo, where a cataclysm off in the distance was spawning monsters close to Fort Tarsus. So it's going to be something where there's giant storms that cause crazy things. But yeah, they've added in. Um, over the 90 days, the first act, Ectos of Reality, they have you know just a bunch of stuff listed, and now they've got you know March, April, May, the next 90 days listed out. What the Cataclysm events are going to be, all the different stuff that's happening. So like they, you know they're mapping out where the game's going, and you know it, the EA aspect of it is always you know no fun, but the Bioware aspect of it I think is finally taking over. And so honestly, fuck all the haters. I love this game. It's fucking fantastic. And I hope everybody, at least, you know, if you didn't get a chance to try the demo, you know, play it on somebody else's system, give it a shot, because it's a really fun fucking game. It's got load screen issues, though. It did for some demo, people, and it does here. It's, you shouldn't have to have to go back to whatever the main stage is to go and change your equipment and layout. If you want to that... change out your weapons or if you want to change something on your javelin, you shouldn't have to go back to Fort Tarsus or whatever it is, have that load, load up your inventory screen, change your stuff, Load back to Fort Tarsus, then load back to the map. That's a pain in the ass. That's not eh, well thought out. That that would frustrate a, me. It's a little aggravating, but I, it doesn't bug me. You, whatever you load and go into the free play, that's what you got. So you have to be ready for it. So I, I would argue that some some of the pushback you're seeing from gamers is just because it's an EA game. But yeah, <laughs> Metacritic is not always the best place to go but you can sort of get an idea of where something is where they aggregate the scores and it's sitting at a 60 based off 36 critic reviews right now now some of the reviews i'd seen said it was about a seven and a half give it about three to six months when they start adding in some of the more newer features you're probably talking about something that would probably bump up to an eight and a half or a nine it seems like a lot of the reviews i had read was that it still wasn't quite ready it was still lacking polish and that they if they waited a few more months, it would arguably be a better game. 
I talked about it after playing the demo. It's not a game for me, I don't think. I don't like online loot shooters unless it's Borderlands is what it comes down to, basically. <laughs> I do have good news and bad news. Bad news is, Chris, <clears throat> you will probably not be uh, getting any like uh, preview copies of games from EA because you're saying bad stuff about the uh, Anthem. But Bachman, you probably will since you're saying good stuff. Because have you heard <laughs> about the news about uh, the one streamer? Who started like he gave his honest opinion about the game, and it wasn't like all great, and they pretty much blacklisted him. Really, they've done stuff like that before yeah. too. The wow. problem is, it comes back when you, when they find out that that's happening, then people are doing reviews on it. They're just like, oh, you're just in their pocket because that means you keep access and you can do an early review on a game and get all that YouTube revenue or stuff like that. It's, it's happened before. It's a bad PR move though. To take a streamer who might have legitimate concerns on something, and I, I haven't seen the negative reviewer you're talking about there, but I doubt he's on there. On the other, this is fucking bullshit. I fucking hate everything about it. Blah 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 blah. But if someone has I legitimate saw an concerns, article on it. I can't remember anything. I just quickly read through it. It was so, a while back. Sailor Poland says EA paid the guy to make a review, and he said it sucked. Well, oh, it was a paid review. Hmm. I mean. Do you want the honest thing, or do you just want people to say, no, this is great, go buy it? EA said he didn't walk oh, away and violated the TOS, and then the review got pulled. Yeah, sure. I'm sure that was a mm. thing. Yeah, it, it's shady. There's been other stuff that's happened like this with games before. I can't remember specific ones, but we've talked about it on this show, and I remember reading about it before, where streamers and reviewers were arguably not as critical, because if they were as critical as they wanted to be at they would lose access to having it early and then you wouldn't have that in, you wouldn't have that revenue because go and look at like the youtube let's play communities youtube game review communities and stuff like that everything this week is anthem and if you're one of those guys who normally does that and you can't be one of the first out there with an early release of the game you lose a boatload of money i'm sure yeah probably well, I'm not reviewing it for money, and I love it. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> I I think after playing the demo, it certainly needed more polish. I haven't played the finished product, so yeah. I'm sure it is better than the demo was. It's just online yeah, honestly, loot shooters yeah. don't do it for me. And when I play a Bioware game, what I'm expecting is the story. The gameplay looks fun. It looks like they took what worked in Mass Effect Andromeda and expanded on that when it came to moving around and shooting and the gameplay and the combat. You can see the beginnings of Anthem in the Andromeda gameplay, I think. Yeah, see, in the storyline stuff, I'm digging it. I've been doing all the storyline missions on solo just by myself so that I'm not talking to anybody in my headset, nobody's talking to me and interrupting the story, and I'm actually engrossed in the story. And like I said, I'm only like level 9. Like, I'm just under level 10, I believe. And I just got to where you meet two of the main characters in the storyline, and it was a fantastic sequence that was really funny. I laughed out loud watching one of the cutscenes. Like, there's some good Bioware story in here. Like, I'm not going to say, like, it's on KOTOR level yet, but I'm also only, like, a third of the way through the story, so it might be. Like, it is a good story, and I'm enjoying the characters I'm being introduced to. I'm just not sure where it's going, but I'm definitely enthralled, and I'm going to keep doing it. And I like doing the, the fact that, you know, if you go free play or you go into a stronghold, you have to load public because it has to do four people into those... Um, instant servers, but you do have the option of doing the story mode stuff with just your friends or just solo. So it's nice that it gives you both those options in the game. Because, yeah, I mean, just storyline wise, Chris, I think you would dig it if you got to play the single player. But I also see, yeah, after the demo, I see why some people are adverse to trying the game. Because by comparison, that demo was bad, especially, I mean, even with even day one before the patches, it's so much better than what we were doing. Like, it's, it's crazy. Right. And yeah, that, that demo was an old version. Yeah, and the demo itself isn't what turned me off of it. I'm used to seeing a demo and knowing that there's complications and things like that. It's more of, it just reaffirmed for me that online loot shooters just aren't my thing. That's more of what it is. I don't yeah, like it having is, to that is the definitely always game have style. to play yeah. with other folks and stuff like that. I like a good single player game. I like being like, hey, I'm feeling pretty introverted today. F those folks. I'm going to go and save the galaxy in mass effect or something like that. 
As in, I like I'm liking the fact that I mean, basically, when I wanted to play with friends, I was playing either Overwatch or now lately Apex Legends because I love that one way more than Overwatch. But if I didn't want to play with them, I was either going to go play you know Horizon Zero Dawn or I was going to go play Spider Man. You know, a locked in first person game that are both fantastic, both fun as hell. But honestly, Anthem gives me the ability to do either. I you know went got my storm unlocked, put some you know abilities on it, jumped out into free play, and yeah, there's three other people out on the world map world map with me in that instance excuse me but the first time i took my storm out yesterday i didn't see any of those people i literally just ran around in free play by myself and just shot a bunch of stuff and then dingo messaged me and said hey we're going to do the first stronghold do you want to come and i hopped back on my ranger went into a team chat and went and did you know a dungeon run and it was fantastic that like inside of 20 minutes i was able to do both of those things and it was all within the same game yes yeah, that's cool yeah but yeah, I can see why it's not it's not for everybody. It is definitely it's still a looter shooter. And honestly, I, I did have the problem where we got in the dungeon and I saw an enemy and I tried to ping him. And so that's problematic because I'm going back and forth from Apex to Anthem and trying to ping stuff and Anthem doesn't work because it just makes you use an ability. <laughs> it's like, oh enemies here. It's like, wait, I'm not I can't double ping something. God damn, I've been playing too much Apex. Uh... That ping that ping system is so fucking good. It is. It, it's like the best thing ever for a shooter. Like, I love it so much. How, how can we let these people communicate when they don't want to communicate? When they don't want to talk because people are assholes in headsets. <laughs> They're like, oh, yeah, we're going to make it to where we don't have to talk at all. We're going to introduce a, a communication system with one button in your controller that lets you communicate, ready up, acknowledge, say places you want to go, share gear, all of it without having to talk fucking genius <laughs> yeah respawn did good did good good work on that yeah so sailor paul in the chat room i wasn't even going to bring it up but since he did we'll talk about it briefly and he goes meanwhile bethesda bans a fallout 76 player who logged over 900 hours of play i used to love what bethesda. the fuck so what he had what? done is he had more bullets than they said you were supposed to have because he had two characters or and something to the fact that he was able to make a boatload of bullets couldn't carry a bunch of it around so he had it on his second player that he used to move things back and forth which is totally legal and then they banned him i don't know if they have unbanned him yet or not but bethesda's not really doing so great when it comes to building that community for fallout 76 there's a reason why i got to like level six and kind of stop playing on it. Maybe I'll come back to it when they put some more polish to it or get things working better. But that—that's <laughs> you're waiting for that. You're waiting for that No Man's Sky update, like I did. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, that's arguably my most disappointing game within the last calendar year. I know that was a game that came out last year. Yeah. But within the last 365 days, let me rephrase. That's my most disappointing game to have come out in the last 365 days right now. Yeah, which Fallout sucks because I know how much you were looking forward to that. Yeah, I should have known better. It's another one of those online co-op games, which I never seem to stick with very well. Meanwhile, I freaking love Crackdown, even though it's a flawed game. Crackdown 3, oh. super flawed, but super fun. And There was one other thing I wanted to mention. I got introduced to a character who owns a bar in Anthem, and you find out that she won the bar in a card game, and the character Max is voiced by none other than Catherine Tate. Fucking Anthem has a Doctor Who crossover. And her character's awesome. I, cool. I, the introduction was really nice. Yeah, some of the little random characters you meet in Fort Tarsus, I'm just really enjoying like the little little bits of story. And there's literally there's so much to read for every place that you go, every event that you take part of, like these little the little chunks of story and world building that's in there. Like I've read maybe half of the stuff that I've unlocked, and each one is like a paragraph or a couple. And like I could probably go sit down right now and spend an hour just to clear out all my little new info indicators because there's that many different things that I've run into where I didn't read the whole thing yet. Like, it's got a ton of backstory. Well, Bioware's always been really good about having the yeah. codex or whatever that populates with a bunch of stuff. Like, if you read the codex to Dragon Age or to Mass Effect, it was massive and a book in and of itself. My hope yeah, really is that... It's called a codex and Anthem, too. My hope is that anthem does well and they continue they make the dragon age sequel because supposedly they've been working on that and then maybe that leads to some more mass effect at some point in time but who knows at this point i can't predict what electronic arts is going to do with them it's very true and the problem is it's a crowded sphere right now these online loot shooters i mean 
Destiny was pretty good. Destiny 2, by all accounts, not quite as good. And a lot of Destiny 2 folks went back to the original Destiny to keep playing that instead of Destiny 2. So, Yeah, which is never a good sign. <laughs> they, they've all got to figure out what their next step is to continue evolving the genre, I think. Yeah. Not that I'm an expert or anything. Because remember, online loot shooters, unless they're Borderlands, I don't really care about them. And I haven't played Borderlands in a couple years as it is. God, I love that game, though. That is a fun one. So good. I would like a new Borderlands. Then again, I also haven't finished playing the pre sequel. Yeah, me neither. But I did finish Tales from the Borderlands, so I've got that going for me, too. All that being said, though, I think we've finished up the news of the week. We've complained about video games. We've talked about the future of the gaming industry as we see it, even though we're not experts and the like. I mean, what else do we have to talk about in the news? Did we cover it all? I think we got it. We are professional amateurs. Yes. I think so. Hmm. Hmm. Willie, no, I was laughing professional amateurs. Will, uh, Willie's deep in thought on that one. Hmm. Indubitably. <laughs> I think we did it. I think so, too. So looking at the time, it is time for us to start wrapping this thing up because, hey, we've already been on the air for a little over an hour. It's, it's time to start shutting things down. So before we shut this thing down, though, we do like to do a little segment called What I'm Into. It's our chance to share with you guys who are watching live or listening at a later date just what kind of geeky and or nerdy things we've been getting into so that maybe you'll want to check them out yourselves. Willie, kick us off. What have you been getting into? Well, not much. Just playing some more Anthem going on there. Not Anthem, sorry. Apex Legends. <laughs> Wrong A word. Wrong <laughs> A word. <laughs> yeah, asshole. That's the right one. Um, that, and I'm the asshole in this situation. Um, Dead by Daylight. Uh, the big thing I've been playing, Nino Kuni 2. I'm put in close, right at the cusp of 50 hours in so far. And I think I'm, I think I'm a little bit over halfway through the storyline. I've been doing, I've been not trying to stop doing all the storylines. I'm just doing all the side quests as they come up. I try and do that at the very beginning of each chapter. And also as they pop up too, I just go, let me go to this city. They got anything? Ooh, they do got some. Let me go do that. Give me the, I don't even care about the rewards because rewards don't really matter. I don't really care about it. I mean, already, uh, I think I'm right close to level 60 of my characters. And from the, I guess the last update they did, they upped the uh, level cap to 120. So I'm guessing it was at 100. And Jesus. for the DLC they put out, and they still have another DLC to put out. You know, this game came out, I think, close to a year ago. They put out their first DLC in December. So it seems like this DLC was something they were not working on when it got released which is a good sign. They took their time mm -hmm. and they put it out the right thing. And I'm pretty sure they still got one more DLC to put out. So, nice. so I'm getting my little kingdom set up. I do love the uh, kingdom building part. Uh, so far, I just wish it uses in game time to build up your money and stuff for it. So I like going like, I want to do all these things. I can't do a lot of things because I don't have that much money for my kingdom. Cause there's three different um, currencies in the game. The regular like money you get from like defeating you know enemies and monsters and whatever, and then you get your key, your like your pretty much your home kingdom currency to build up like your kingdom, and then there's also mm. another currency with like this this traveling merchant that he has like special wares for, and he also has like special missions for you to do too. Those are not that hard to do because he's mostly just saying like collect all these items right here, and <laughs> most of them I already have all the items for it because just nice. randomly. There's so much fucking items that you just randomly get throughout the world. Just so many. They don't really do anything except for like trade them in for missions. Like, hey, can you go get me this thing? <laughs> I already got it. Here you go. So I've been putting in a lot of time in that. I don't think I watched any new movies this week. No, I have not. Yeah. Yeah, so I've had a pretty boring slow week i uh, went to uh game of thrones trivia monday night only it was on seasons one and two and i had a great team name that we uh that we did that they reluctantly finally chose because no one can make a decision and so i said well, we're doing this then my uh my team name was eight inches of snow Pauls for laughter nope no laughter for you i, I snorted fair. a little bit that's close enough for me. 
<laughs> I, I take what I can get. But um, I get what I can take. No way, I take what I can get. Yeah, either way, it works. Uh, that's really weird. gives and takes. Yeah, I'm I'm am I'm a I'm a unselfish lover like that. But um, yeah, we did not uh we did not do that well because uh wow we did uh, we didn't win any rounds. Ouch. And so and he didn't actually say like what the points was for each team. So I never got to hear that night. Uh, eight inches of snow. Yeah, I was sad. <laughs> that. I was very sad about that because I thought it was a great name. I'm sorry, Willie. I'm yeah. Sorry. Maybe next pub trivia. We we're actually going. Well, this was a different one that we went to. It was in another city, just because they were doing the Game of Thrones thing. So next week we're going back to probably our normal place, and uh, hopefully i just maybe I can just use the team name there. Eight inches of Jon Snow. That'd be good. <laughs> And he actually says it. <laughs> you just have uh, to get people to say eight inches. You're weird. Well, I mean, you, you you want people to say what you want in your life. All right, let's just bypass that then. Yeah, let's just, <laughs> we're just going to blow right past Next that. person. Next person. I'll go up next. <laughs> uh, almost done with my Brooklyn Nine-Nine rewatch that I've been doing with my fiance. We're on the season five finale, and then there's only six episodes of season six to do. And then I have to start watching Parks and Rec, I guess. So I've got that going for me. Uh, I've been playing a little bit more Crackdown 3. I really just have fun blowing things up in that game and just wandering around like a madman. It's just fun. I know it's got its flaws, but who cares? And then uh, this week, I got caught up on most of the TV I was supposed to watch. And goddamn, uh, The Orville, really good. It's something they've been setting up since the very beginning, if you believe Seth MacFarlane, what he said on Twitter. It led to quite the cliffhanger, and there's a part two coming up next week, and I really like where they're going with it. So we'll see what happens with it. Before I finish talking, though, I see Suncast say he watched the first episode of Brooklyn Nine-Nine and couldn't stand it. Ironically, that's what happened to me the first time I tried watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine. And then based off Naki kind of prodding me and be like, this is a really good show, I went and watched about four or five episodes. And it was around like episode three, I think. It all came together, and I was like, oh this is really good it's not just like a cop comedy these people all have interesting personalities you start to care about them so the the pilot episode of brooklyn 99 was not a great hook for me it took a few episodes for me to get hooked and now i love it i think it's absolutely hilarious so if you if you want to give it a try i'd say do a few episodes and then see if you're digging it because i have enjoyed it a lot but what else am i getting into work and other projects it's not been very exciting that's about all i've been getting into and anthony i'm pretty sure i know what you've been getting into <laughs> mainly yeah mainly anthem um i got a nice uh i did get me a funko pop when i ordered my last set of books had one of the ones on the cheap list i got my Enfys nest so i have my my bad guy kind of from solo which was a really cool looking pop the helmet's freaking wicked um i did almost finish selling all of the little killer sketch cards um of the full set the only two I have left are Billy the Puppet from Saw and Sam from Trick R Treat. I just got to receive my payment in my PayPal for the, the set of five that I sold to one guy. So those those went over pretty well. Sold all sold all but two so far. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then, yeah, I got a little Hulu watching in in between my anthem time. I got caught up on The Gifted, which that had a, an ending that was pretty shocking the last episode. Um, I also randomly watched the pilot of Brooklyn Nine-Nine yesterday, and I thought the pilot was kind of funny. So being as that if that's like not great for hooking most people, I'll probably keep watching that and going forward because I did and I at least enjoyed it. I got a, a couple of laughs out of it. But yeah, played a ton of freaking Anthem. Uh, I did an hour of streaming Dead by Daylight yesterday just to take an Anthem break. And, you know, had a had a pretty good uh, Trapper match and then had a kind of a crappy Survivor match and then went and had dinner and uh, watched uh, my buddy and his friends came over or my buddy and his kids came over. So the nephews... They uh, rented a uh, Venom, which they hadn't seen yet. So we had a pizza and Venom night because we they hadn't seen it yet. So that was fun, and it was kind of funny to watch the movie again, knowing everything that was going to happen. And it's not, you know, it's not great, but man, it's not the worst Marvel movie, you know. So it, it's got that going for it. Tom Hardy's charismatic as a motherfucker. I'll watch him do anything. What was, is the was, worst Marvel movie to you? The original Captain America sequel. So you go back to the old 70s Captain America movies, the second one is god-awful. 
I've never seen it, so I can't testify that mine would have to be Electra. Well, that's pretty and bad. Electra is pretty bad. Let's it build have all the, these four mini boss characters. Oh wait, they're just gone within like yeah. twenty seconds. Okay. The the I will say the special effects on the tattoo man were pretty cool though. The way they did his tattoos coming to life, I did enjoy that. That part was well done. Um, but then yeah, other than that, um, I had actually been and some of the other Hulu stuff. My buddy kept telling me about a show, and I finally watched it called Letter Kenny, which I don't know if you guys have heard of that one. It's about a small Canadian town that has five thousand people in it. And the the city's name is Letterkenny, L E T T E R K E N N Y, and it's basically four characters with like the driest English wit in the world, but they're Canadian hicks that work on a farm, and so it's this weird mix of this dry humor with everything through the Canadian eye, and it's just a goddamn hilarious show. Like each each season, I think is only like six or seven episodes, and there's like six or seven seasons. So all together, it's like the whole thing is like one season of an American TV show. But it's yeah, it's it's damn funny, and the dry pan humor of the main character is just goddamn hilarious. I want to see outtakes from this show because these guys have to be breaking after every time they call cut because they just stone face every line, and it's fucking hilarious. And yeah, the, the weird ass Canadian hockey players that they make fun of, and yeah, it's just it's real good shit. It's real funny. And honestly, I thought I thought it was a lot funnier in Brooklyn Nine Nine, but also I only watched the pilot of that, so I'm gonna keep watching both of those shows to see where they go. But yeah, that Letter Kenny is goddamn hilarious. My buddy is telling me about this. You have to watch this. And the second episode is all about fights. Like it's it's so ridiculous. And then uh, what was the second episode? Was fights? And the third episode was the softest birthday ever. So they have a friend whose mom used to give him like these ridiculous, what they just called soft birthdays, and so they kept the tradition going as adults. And it's hilarious to see these like twenty year olds doing like a kid's birthday party with frosting and cupcakes and a unicorn. Like it's it's just fucking fantastic. But yeah, go go check out Letter Kenny, and then when you're done with that, go play Anthem. Because yeah, Demon in a Bottle. I, I've been I've been drinking vodka nightly and flying around in a mech suit. It's fun. (laughs) (laughs) Vodka and gunfire, people. Vodka and gunfire. With all that, then, I guess we are ready to shut this thing down. Before we shut it down, you guys have any final thoughts for folks? Going once? I'm sticking with vodka and and gunfire. Going twice? (laughs) Yeah. That's high praise. Well, guys, before we shut it down, a quick reminder, we do do this live every Sunday, 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Central, over on Geeks.Live. That is the streaming home of the Gonna Geek Network. If you head over to Geeks.Live right now, you can scroll down to the bottom of the page and then see a list of all the other upcoming live shows. So please feel free to drop in on one of those shows and tell them that we sent you. Yeah, I I guess that's it then. You guys don't have any any powerful final thoughts, so we're going to shut this thing down. And say no, thank I you everyone for joining us. And we'll be back next week with some more over the top shenanigans and making fun of things, probably. So thanks, everyone. Yeah, brother. Bye. Bussy. <laughs> thanks for listening to this brand new episode of the All Things Good and Nerdy podcast. Don't forget, we'll be back next Sunday live at 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Central, over at live.atgnpodcast.com, channel three of the Alpha Geek radio app, and over at our network home at gunnageek.com slash live. If you have any feedback for the show, please contact us at atgnpodcast at gunnageek.com on our hotline number at 304-806-ATGN, or even better, go to Twitter and send us a message at atgnpodcast. The music you've heard in this show is produced by Kevin McLeod and can be found at incompetech.com.